Welcome back everybody. Today I just wanted to answer a couple of questions from my last video. If you missed that video, that video was about how to send and receive UDP packets in C, and there were some interesting questions that I wanted to address really quick. So let's go back and look at that code. So in my last video, I created two programs, this UDP send.c, which basically just comes through and sends a particular a single packet, and UDP receive here, which receives that packet. And two questions showed up in the comments that I wanted to address. The first is, I was running a bunch of example tests, so I would say, let's just run UDP send. Now, remember we needed an IP address, so we'll use the loopback address. If I can type and uh, we pick a port and then a message and we'll say, hello world. And so some people were asking, where did that packet go, right? Because no one was listening. I can send a bunch of, you know, hello world two, hello world three. And if we come in here and we say UDP receive 9,800, we're not receiving anything unless I come in here and yeah. So because, because there's not a packet available, it basically, we're just not getting the actual uh, information from any of these packets. And the question was, what happened with those packets? Why didn't we receive them? And so I wanted to just clarify that in UDP, it is best effort. There is no reliability. And so in this case, if you send a packet and no one and no one's receiving it, that packet's just going to get dropped. It's just going to get lost. Okay, so that's question number one. Question number two that I wanted to address is really kind of interesting. The question was, so in that example, uh, in the UDP send program, we did not use connect, but instead we just created the socket like this, and then we use the send to function, which is different from send in that send to you have the socket, you have the message, length of the message, but then here at the end, you have the address that you're sending to. So when you send to, you specify the address that you're going to send to. And so that is appropriate for UDP sockets. Now, the question came up, can you use connect? Because uh, in that video, I mentioned that we don't use connect, but in fact, you actually can. And so I wanted to show you that, show you an alternate version because you actually can come in here in UDP and you can. So I just made a, this version is exactly the same as the last program with some key differences is instead I basically basically call connect where I pass in the UDP socket and I pass in the peer address here. And so basically this looks just a lot like what we would do with a stream socket. And then after we connect, then we can just use send like we would regularly. Now, this might be a little confusing because you might say to yourself, hey, in UDP, there is no concept of a connection. So what does it mean to connect? What is happening in this case when we're dealing with datagram sockets with UDP sockets is that this connect, all it's really doing is saving the address. It's saying, hey, this is the address I'm going to use. There is no connection process like you would have with a stream socket if you're using TCP. So we can do this, but it doesn't mean the same thing. And then, yes, it does make my code a little bit uh, smaller. I don't have to specify the address every time. Now it's just gonna remember that address. And that may be convenient for some programs that you may be working on. So as often as the case in programming, there are multiple ways to solve the same problem. So that's good to know. But I wanted to mention this because I think it's also, it brings up an interesting design question. And that is, in this case, is this a good idea? Some people are going to like this because send the send call is going to be more compact than a send to call. I would actually love to see down in the comments if anyone has a case where this is superior. Personally, I don't love it because I think it could be confusing. If I was looking at this code, if someone just handed me this code and I'm reading it and I see connect and send, my brain first starts to think about connections and stream sockets. And so while this does give some kind of parallel structure with stream sockets, and I don't know, maybe there's a case where that makes sense. To me, I think this is more likely to be confusing than it is to be helpful. But maybe I just haven't thought of the right example. And so if you can think of it, please drop it down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. But I wanted to point that out so you know it is possible. If you see it, don't be confused. And who knows, maybe this even helps you on a future project. I hope it does. I hope you learned something new. And until next time, I'll see you later.